It should have been a welcome public relations triumph for Boeing, an opportunity to show that even if panels were falling from its aircraft, it could still fly humans into space and return them safely to Earth. And for a while at least, it looked like it had been successful. The majestic June launch of the much-delayed and over-budget Starliner capsule from Florida, ferrying two NASA astronauts to the ISS, offered a glimpse of a bright future in the heavens for the troubled aerospace giant. The euphoria, however, was as fleeting as a shooting star. The Starliner program has once again encountered obstacles with a series of tech issues, software glitches, hardware failures, all causing significant delays. The financial consequences have been severe, with Boeing's losses reaching $1.6 billion and continuing to grow by millions of dollars each day the project's delayed. The situation has severely damaged Boeing's reputation, leading many to doubt the company's ability to provide a reliable crewed spacecraft. Despite recent announcements from NASA and Boeing suggesting that frantic testing is underway and yielding positive results, the thrusters that unexpectedly failed early on in the mission have performed well in tests, and some small but persistent helium leaks are no longer seen as a barrier to separation. However, there's an underlying feeling of uncertainty. Press conferences, at least initially, have been rare, leading to strong suspicions that Boeing and NASA are downplaying the severity of the technical issues or the potential duration of the astronauts' stay, with initial estimates of the mission duration ranging from 8 to 10 days. NASA and Boeing officials consistently deliver vague statements such as Starliner may return soon or there's nothing too serious, resulting in a lack of transparency about the problems or the return date of the Starliner. Mark Nappy, Boeing's commercial crew program manager, did admit that he inadvertently fueled the Lost in Space narrative. Asked how he would handle things differently, he said, We would not have been so emphatic about it being an eight-day mission. It's my regret that we didn't just say we're going to go up there and stay until we get everything done that we want to do. The justification is understandable. We have to understand that the Starliner doesn't have much time left. It has to return to Earth to make way for the Crew-9 mission. Frankly, NASA and Boeing were allowed to proceed entirely on their terms. It's likely that the two astronauts and the Starliner capsule would take much longer to finish their testing. This mission involves a world-renowned aerospace giant and the leading U.S. space agency. They're going to do whatever it takes to avoid embarrassment, as long as there's still an opportunity to delay the return. However, there are limits to everything. For a long time, it seemed almost certain that the astronauts would return to Earth inside the Starliner. Yet recent activities at NASA, Boeing, and SpaceX indicate that Wilmore and Williams may come back home aboard the Crew Dragon spacecraft instead of Starliner. A reliable source has indicated that the chances of the crew returning on Dragon are more than 50-50. Another source suggested the likelihood is even higher. To be clear, NASA has not yet made a final decision. It's possible that this won't happen until at least next week, with Jim Free, NASA's associate administrator, potentially making the call. Here are some details that add credibility to the option of using Dragon to bring the two Starliner astronauts back home. First, NASA has been consistently delaying the decision. A flight readiness review meeting was scheduled for August 1st, but it got canceled. Instead, NASA issued a vague blog update on Thursday saying, Once the Starliner's returns plan is finalized, likely next week, more info will be shared about the agency's preparations for the return readiness review and subsequent press conference. So the meeting may be happening next week. Secondly, NASA awarded a $266,000 contract to SpaceX July 14th for a special study for emergency response. NASA says this study is not directly related to Starliner issues, but two sources told ARS that it actually is. Although the study includes work on bringing more than four crew members home on Crew Dragon, a scenario involving Frank Rubio and the Soyuz MS-22 leak, it also allows SpaceX to explore bringing Dragon home with six passengers, including the regular crew, in addition to Wilmore and Williams. Third, SpaceX has been actively working on a scenario where two or four astronauts are launched aboard Crew-9 and normal crews four people. The mission has a nominal launch date of August 18th, but is likely to be delayed. SpaceX has identified suitable flight suits for Wilmore and Williams, allowing them to return home on the Crew-8 spacecraft currently docked at the space station or the Crew-9 vehicle. It's unclear how the crew assignments for the two Dragon return flights will be arranged. If four astronauts get launched on Crew-9, five potentially fly home on each Dragon spacecraft.
Last, in meetings this week at the NASA field centers, there have been some pretty lively discussions about whether to bring the crew home on Starliner. Many teams are still saying no to Starliner as of Wednesday. It's unclear how this is going to get resolved. Some engineers think that if there are questions about Starliner, NASA should choose the safer route, fly on Crew Dragon, which has launched safely 13 times and landed 12. This seems to be a tough decision for NASA. On one hand, they still want to bring the astronauts back to Earth using Starliner, but on the other, the positive test aren't still enough for NASA to be certain that Starliner's issues have been fully fixed. The hesitation is evident. Do you think NASA will change this decision? Comment below to let us know. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. So, is Starliner really too dangerous? There are a few key points to note how NASA is handling the extended Starliner mission, which makes anyone feel that Starliner is indeed unreliable. First of all, NASA and Boeing are taking an extremely cautious approach in analyzing the issue with Starliner's thrusters and helium leaks before allowing the spacecraft to return to Earth. They have identified more than 30 actions to address these problems. They also conducted ground tests in addition to two hot fire tests while docked. The ground testing alone has taken a week. Keep in mind that the Starliner CFT is the third consecutive flight to experience issues with thrusters. In the last two tests, they couldn't find the root cause. Therefore, the pressure to thoroughly resolve the thruster issue this time is enormous. And of course, it requires a lot of effort and time, not as simple as officials are saying to the media. Another point is that NASA revised the cargo on Starliner just before launch to include a critical space station toilet pump, implying that the agency has an interest in keeping the spacecraft in orbit for as long as possible. Ironically, they took some of the astronaut suitcases off the Boeing-made spacecraft, and of course, there's no laundry facilities on the ISS. Imagine what life would be like for astronauts in space for two months without the basic items they need for everyday life. Another reason for the delay is to gather more valuable data and testing time that engineers have been eagerly anticipating. This suggests that NASA and Boeing may be taking advantage of the situation to collect more information than initially planned. Why didn't they conduct these tests during the uncrewed test flight in 2019? That way, the astronauts wouldn't be so deeply affected by their work, and there'd also be less pressure to extend Starliner's time on the ISS. Perhaps for a crewed mission, safety concerns force the agency to take cautious actions. Moreover, a Boeing Starliner has previously lost too much to SpaceX. Lucrative contracts, the glory of executing missions for the ISS, and perhaps most importantly, the trust of all of us. And now is the right time for Boeing to reclaim that glory. Let's see if they can ultimately attain this. As for Dragon, which is shining brightly, how will it rescue Starliner? And if it's an emergency relief situation, can SpaceX really pull it off? Assume that while Starliner is bringing the astronaut home, but runs into trouble on the way down, similar to what happened on the way up. Space Dragon could quickly mount a rescue mission. Frankly, with the current flight cadence of SpaceX's Dragon and Falcon 9, this might pose a bit of a challenge. An assembled rocket sitting in a hangar fully tested could be launched within a short time, maybe 24 hours, my guess. In the case that they're being launched as unmanned lifeboats, and of course in launchable condition, you could take considerably higher risks, like skipping a wet dress rehearsal. Just get it on the pad, fuel it up, and if no flags come up during the countdown, yeah, light the candle. If only one got ready to launch, but with favorable external factors such as good weather and the crises allowing for a few days, you could do some testing to increase your chance of a successful launch. Pretty amazing, huh? However, the biggest challenge for the space agency this time is how to carry out a rescue mission without embarrassing Boeing. NASA might consider an idea like this. Instead of calling it a rescue mission, since the crew doesn't need to come home immediately, NASA could call it the U.S. Replacement Spacecraft. By simply changing the name of the mission, the perceived severity of the problem could be reduced. The Commercial Crew Program, a partnership between NASA and private companies to send astronauts into LEO after NASA's shuttles got retired in 2011, led to the creation of SpaceX's Crew Dragon. Crew Dragon successfully completed 12 crewed flights since it started up in 2020. But Boeing's capsule has significantly lagged behind. The first uncrewed test flight of Starliner in 2019 got aborted due to a software error that sent it off course, and the second attempt was hindered by a fuel valve issue. After multiple evaluations last year, the company had to resolve problems with the capsule's parachutes and remove about 1.6 kilometers of flammable tape. The current launch is Boeing's third attempt to bring a crew to the ISS. The previous two got scrubbed due to a vibrating oxygen valve on ULA's Atlas V that carries the Starliner made by Lockheed Martin and a computer glitch in the ground launch sequencer. That's all for today's episode. Thanks for watching and see you next time.